I won't go deep into it, but I think it, all good things come to an end. If you study the Roman Empire, the Roman Empire, the things that we going through now, is the exact same things the Roman Empire went through. And a lot of people say history repeats itself. I don't think history repeats itself. I think mankind does. If you alive, subscribe. Y'all know, look, yeah, I like that. I like that name. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a, uh, I'm not a person to brag on me all the time. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes you got to pat yourself on the back, you know, because ain't nobody else going to do it sometime. When you ain't feeling good and everything ain't going right, you just got to go ahead and pat yourself and say, you the yeah. shit. You know, I'm just saying, on this day right here, if you up under the sound of my voice, and you're listening to what I'm saying, and you know you the ish. I'm trying not to cuss. And you know you the ish. Go ahead and pat yourself on the back. Um, I want to throw this out here, and I just want to want to let this be known. Every time somebody say in my city of Nashville, like, "Hey, let's come together, let's do this," um, I'm reminding them that we already together. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, where are you at? Uh -huh. you, you know what I mean? This old man, um, I'm going to um, quit saying that. I know who you will from where you are. You know what I'm saying? If, mm -hmm. if, if you supporting these people, we all supporting the same group of people. Like, I'm going to see you and I know you with me. So we don't have to talk every day. We don't have to be in tune every other day. But we, we both know where we're going and what we're doing. And so I got a special guest today. Um, I got a mirage of things to talk about, and he's got a book out, but I want him to introduce yourself, man. Introduce yourself, man, to my people. And Vic Gurley Jr. Uh, flew in town for the podcast. I appreciate you having me on. Uh, just a, a entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur, and newly published author. So just trying to get the word out, man. Spread some wisdom. Okay. Uh, you know something I wanted to. Uh, something came across my timeline yesterday. Okay. And uh, I just want to kind of touch on it. Uh, Lunell, if you know who Lunell yep. is. And she, like, lashed out at 50, you know what I'm saying, and telling 50, like, hey, you got a comedy show and uh, no women are on it. It's all men on it. Uh, what I didn't like about it was this same man has got you hired for big jobs. This mm -hmm. same man has got you hired for TV shows and um, I think she was on Ghost and just, just uh -huh. a couple of things. And so, like, when it comes to be a black man, like, what more do we have to do when it's coming to the black men and the women of our community? Because no matter what you say, it's it's off. Mm -hmm. It's off. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that's, a, that's something that's very prevalent within our community the black community but i think at the end of the day you really just got to focus on just what can you what have you done to contribute and you got to be comfortable with who you are and, and what you've been able to pour into people uh at the end of the day everybody not gonna be appreciative uh you know you could do 10 things for somebody and you say no or lead them out of one thing and all that go out the window so as long as you stay grounded and true to yourself, I don't think you, I don't think there's no point in going back and forth no more. Do, do, do you think, um, do you think the older generation as like, you know, our, our, our moms and our grandmas and stuff, do you think when it came to do with relationships in the black family was tighter, you know what I'm saying? Then and from then to now. Yeah. I, I think they had to be because, they didn't have access like we have now. Yeah. yeah. Now sh you could access anybody in the world with the click of a button, just with the phone. So they didn't have that access. So to be a part of the community, you had to be like that. Facts, facts, facts. And so, like with with with, with the journey you on, like, um, I watch you and I see it's like peaceful. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You more of a, you, you travel a lot. Um, and this is a this is just a a, a minimum question, but you uh, you want to get people to know you a little bit better. Yeah, like 
What do you think your actual purpose was being put on this earth? Uh, so I I like this question now because I recently realized in my own life, like our purpose changes. Yeah. Okay. Most definitely. So, <laughs> like, what my purpose was five years ago is different than what it is now. So, like, five years ago, my purpose was to show my family the things that nobody else was able to accomplish, uh -huh. show them how to accomplish it, yeah. show them that it could be done, show them that, you know, no matter where we come from, what our circumstances are, we all had the ability to do it, it's just doing it. Um, now, it's more so, I think, helping people discover their purpose and 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 really understand who they are and what they meant to do. Um, because a lot of people, I think, is, is lost because we're taught so many things is pushed in front of our face when we're born. Yeah. Um, one question I thought about and I heard the other day, and I want you to think about it. Do you remember who you were before the world told you who you should be? Not, you know what? Um, uh, just to think about that question, I think I was. I'm going to tell you why. Mm -hmm. uh, the one person I always trusted was my grandmama. Okay. And like, when when somebody like that say something to you, it's just like I believe that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and 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 we're so. I was talking to somebody today, and um, we was talking about people being offended by talking about them. Uh, and and this might be cliche or whatever. You could you could say what you want to say about it, but my grandma told me she said sticks and stones might hurt your bone, but words would never hurt you. And that stuck with me to today. Uh -huh. And so, and that's why, like a person like me, yeah, I know I'm be good in my position because it ain't really too much. You can say, but only thing you can make me mad, you say something about my mama. <laughs> if you say something about mama, go back to school. If you say something about my mama, you know what I'm saying? You got a problem. That's the we got a problem. Yeah. But outside of that, they done call me big forehead. They done, you know what I mean? They done call me. Let me ask you a question though. How much does finances matter? When, when we're talking about moving forward and we're talking about coming together and all that sound good, but everybody's broke. So I'm not going to say finances don't matter. What we do with the finances is what matters. So a lot of people um, want to make this massive amount of money, but don't learn or study what to do with it if they were to get it. Okay. So... I think we put a lot more emphasis on money than we should. And I think that's why we are the brokest community. We spend the most. Oh, yeah, so that, that's crazy. there's no that's shortage crazy. of money. You know what I'm saying? There's no shortage. Everybody talk about I'm broke. I'm broke. I can't afford it. I, no, you can. You just making bad decisions with your money. Huh. If we can spend $1.3 trillion in a year within the black community, it ain't no shortage of money. Dang. It's shortage on the education or the 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 wisdom of what to do with it. Well, um, I got a little rebuttal on that. You okay. know what I'm saying? And and not not in a bad way, but in a good way. Black people have been catching up for the longest. Uh can can we agree on that? Or disagree on that. Yeah, yeah. Um, we we've made uh, some major strides. We've yeah, for sure. made some major strides. You know what I'm saying. And so my 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 thing on that is, like, you can have all the faith in God. You can have everything going on. Sometimes it's hard to catch up with the finances that you're working with. You know what I'm saying. Sometimes you can. Like sometimes you can get bagged up to where like I ain't caught up in two years. You know what I'm saying. So so that's where this come in right okay. so let's let's say you over your head and bills and debt are you gonna sit and stress about that debt or are you gonna figure out okay I, you can't make it go it ain't just gonna poof it, disappear right not at all so you gotta figure out okay how do i what do i do to make some more money uh, yeah so i think one of the biggest problems at least what i've seen myself 
is we put too much emphasis on I got all this debt. Mm -hmm. I'm broke. I'm broke. I'm broke. Okay. And not on, all right, this is what I need to do to make some money. This is who I need to be studying. Okay. These are the books I need to be reading. This is the type of information I need to be consuming. Okay. This is what I need to cut out my life that's taking away, that's messing up my ment my uh, mindset and keeping me over here focused on the negativity. Mm -hmm. So once the mind changed, the body follow. How do we know who to listen to now in, in, in these days? Because we all have to grow somewhere. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We all got to, like, it ain't never a shortage of information. Mm -hmm. And um, we understand everybody's got the information. We're trying to listen to uh, uh, Dr. Claude Anderson. We're trying to listen to Umar. We're, you yeah. know what I'm saying? We're, we're listening to uh, Tariq. Uh -huh. we, 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 we are trying our best to listen to people that see something that we feel like we're old, you know what I'm saying? Like, how much do you feel like that we are old some, or do you even feel like we're old anything when it comes to talk to the black skin? So it's easy to say that we're old something based on what we are, our, our ancestors was put through in the past. Okay. At this point, I think it's, it's wasted energy to expect for somebody to, to, to give you something, to right. pay that debt. It's not going to happen. Facts. So at what point do you say, all right, they not going to pay their debt? Just like if somebody owe you some money and you know they not going to pay you back. <laughs> you gotta, it, like, what you going to do? You got to move on. You got to go get your, you got to go get that money back somewhere. When it comes to um, spirit, 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 spirituality, um, how much do you trust, like Bible wise? You know what I'm saying? You know, we all like we all are freaking I'm a I'm a Jesus man. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? And I might not look at it like everybody else like it. Like, like I said, we can read scripture and I might be seeing something totally different. We yeah. understand that the Bible has been tainted with a little bit. Yeah. We understand that man has wrote it, but how far do we need to be really digging into spirituality? Uh spirituality, how you say it? You can Talk about me if you want to. I don't, my grandmama said, you, 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 I don't care about you talking yeah. to me. How much do we need to be digging into that? So first, I think it's important to understand the difference between spirituality and religion. He said it right. Now. Cause, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Cause I think, so spirituality is supposed to be a part of religion, but religion is man-made construct. Mm -hmm. So man created religion. Okay. Uh, the Bible, I think, is a book of parables. Oh, my, that's, 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 thank you, uh, V, thank you. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I, the Bible, I got to say this again, my people. The Bible is a book of parables, and I want you to break that down for them, because I could, but I want you to break that down for them. Yeah, so, um, it, to, to make it real simple, it's a lot of symbolism. So, the Bible has some very, uh, like, like it hits on every type of life lesson that yeah. you're going to experience. 100%. Yeah. But I think we look at it, uh, or a majority of the community looks at it in a literal sense and misses the overall message and how it can actually change your life. So, and I think religion is a cause for that. Yeah. Because religion was put in place. I say, and it may be controversial, but I think it was a control mechanism. Most definitely. So They used it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't think we question that enough, especially when we talk about, you know, black churches. Yeah. Uh, so, and I'm, I'm a nerd. So like I do a lot of research. I go down those rabbit holes and. All of that. You'll be in some somewhere deep in the rabbit hole. Ain't nobody never been before. Yeah. You, know, that, that you wanted them. Yeah. <laughs> and and that that's why I think the question why is so important. Um, because when you ask why, you actually learn, like, you got to go back to the origin of things. Like, whatever issue you trying to resolve or whatever you got questions about, you got to go back to where it originated from. Yeah. And understand how it progressed to where it is now. You got to know why. And who, who, who is on your level of what you're doing and how you're looking at life 
if we use in a figure, if we use in one of these figures out here, who who would you say like you will be pushing behind? You know what I'm saying? Um, I think, and I I get people tell me this often, and I can see it some in a in a in a way. Uh, 19 Keys. I remember, you know what that is. Mm-mm. So 19 you know, Keys uh, is you know, a, uh, okay. If he, he, if he, you, you, do you like him? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, he could, he got me. If, if yeah. I like him, he cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He has a, um, so he has a podcast actually called uh, High Level Conversations mm-hmm. and talks about a lot of, like, some of everything, but yeah. goes deep. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that's somebody, and he's, he's a follower, like, um, he studies Farrakhan, um, a lot of different people. I really. love Farrakhan. Like, yeah. look, I'm going to tell you something. And, and uh, I've said this on one of my shows earlier, but um, shout out to Farrakhan. And I'm going to tell you why. Um, that's why I said you really have to watch. I don't know. The Bible talks about what you, what you see and what you hear. Like, they have demonized Farrakhan for all these years. And so you got a young black man like me coming up. Farrakhan is radical. He's this and that, this yeah. and that. And this man ain't nothing. Then when, when you get grown, you like, we're pushing behind Farrakhan. Just to mm-hmm. be honest with you, like his push is a, a, a is is a is a is a quote unquote godly push. Yeah. If they want to use it in that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so like, it's just so easy for you to believe something and don't even know nothing if you don't go do your research. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's easy to when you have so many people yelling out all these different things, it's easy to get caught up in that because it can be overwhelming. Cause a lot of people just don't have the mental capacity to really dig deep into these things to understand the concepts. So what I say when listening to people, because you can learn from anybody. Yeah, most definitely. No matter how ignorant they are. Most definitely. Eat the meat, spit out the bones. bones. Yeah. And and, and I, I think that's just the important thing when you listen to anybody. I want to, um, real quick, because he uh, he brought something to the show, and uh, I want to talk about this book and what you do, what what you got. What, know yeah, what yeah, like, man. You know, you know I, came, I came with gifts. You know, I don't man, like to show up saying. places empty-handed. Hey, this the one thing about podcasts, if you want to get in it, <laughs> you get a lot of gifts. I got a gift on. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it, 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 so it, that you there, know what I'm saying? Um, that's, that's the brand um, Real. Okay. Real is the acronym, Rich Even okay. After Losses. And then the book. And then this is the book, Why Don't We Ask Why? Why don't okay, um, go get the book. Why don't we ask why first? Yeah, of all. yeah. You know what I'm saying. Go get that. I'm special. I just kind of get it because <laughs> I got a podcast. You know what I'm saying. And so, uh, that's a big thing in the community. And I don't want to get into that what we was talking about earlier, but I want to talk about it. Um, why don't we ask why? Um, we've been down. The black community been down with this same team for a long time. Mm-hmm. And the same team hasn't done nothing, yeah. in my opinion. And so, as a community, why don't we question more? Why don't we ask why? Because if enough people say it, we accept it as truth. And um, the reason why we don't go deeper into and do our own homework is because once we become aware of the information, we can't ignore it no more. Mm. And now we have to be held accountable for it. Woo. A lot of people don't like accountability. I was texting somebody today, and she was so mad at me because I told her, oh, I said, you don't like accountability. Mm. Oh, you like to say something, and you don't like to keep your word. Yeah. And, and so uh, I'm outspoken, and if I say something back to you, oh, you really don't, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. How much, uh, question, how much has the rap community affected the black community? Massively. Uh, massively. And I, and I think it has, again, this might be a controversial take. I think it's definitely hindered our progress overall. Um, I'll say the mainstream. Okay. I'll say mainstream. I'm not going to okay. say all. Yeah. Uh, 
mainstream and what's pushed and what's put in front of us. Uh, because, so, I speak about this a lot now. Uh, over the past, like, year or two, I stopped listening to mainstream hip-hop. Mm. Because, and you touched on it uh, briefly earlier, about what we see, what we hear. Yeah, yeah. So, any, whatever we consume is going to come out in, a, like, how we are in everyday life. No matter how much you think, how strong you think you are, how un, unaffected you think you are, it's always, it's back here in the subconscious mind. People don't understand the power of that. Okay. So listen to rap music talking about killing each other, popping mollies, fucking, uh, excuse me, I don't no. know if we cuss cool. on it. Yeah. We cuss yeah, on it. All right. We'll, we'll blank it out if we got to, yeah. but, 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 but the, you know what I mean? But, but yeah, like that, that affects your mind. So the way you look at things, the way you view the world is influenced by the things you listen to, the things you see. So I had to cut that out and I started discovering hip hop artists that ain't in the mainstream from YouTube. You yeah. know, you, we got the technology now, so you can, Discover artists from all over that just ain't that ain't popped all the way yet. Uh, so I've discovered a lot of people that's dope. A lot of dope artists. Well, definitely, yeah. Um, I mean, I like D One. You know what I'm yeah. saying? D One yeah. is really. Um, do you think that D One is in his place? I like his message, and I, and I it's the delivery can be misconstrued i think and but i understand why he's doing it okay i think he's doing it because that's gonna get the attention just like charleston white yeah yeah charleston white is a very wise man he drops mm. a lot of wisdom, oh, he, he drops a lot of gym. but people don't like his delivery yeah but you gotta think if he said it in a common way calm cool collective They're probably never hear nobody him. listening so he had to create that character so that people listen because Everybody's triggered by the the controversy. I'm gonna tell you something, and I wanna because I wanna talk a little bit about Charles and White too, and but I wanna I wanna go back to D1. Yeah. Um, shout out to Hot Boy Turk. Mm -hmm. uh, he'll be here on the 31st. I host that show. Okay. So shout out uh, Turk. Um, I, I I I he's a good guy. He's he loves his people, but um, he said something to D1. He said, uh, D1, you just did a record with uh Fred O'Bank. You did a record with somebody that records ain't what you're talking about. Yeah, you can say, yeah, I did a record with him and our record is positive, but if his music ain't super duper positive, why are you doing a record with him? And so my, 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 my question is, is to you like, how can you stand on business and you saying you standing on righteous but you're also doing business with people that just ain't standing in your lane. Is that a use factor or that just like, was that an opportunity that you think? I'm just saying. So I, I don't know where his mind is okay. in doing that, okay. but I know if it's me in a situation, I understand sometimes you got to meet people where they at. What's up? Yeah. Um, so you might go on a platform that's not necessarily aligned with your message or, or what you stand for but you don't know how many people on that side you could affect and, and, and help see the light or, you know, positively impact. And But, but I'm just saying it's, uh, it's, it's hard for the, for the people on the outside looking like you even got Tariq. Uh -huh. I messed with Tariq, mm -hmm. but you know, everybody say, Hey, black platform is, is, uh, evil. It is, is devilish. It's, it's all this and that. And we look up to Tariq and then you go to his platform. Mm -hmm. You go to his platform and we're saying, we might say, and I don't have a problem with Vlad and then like, I don't know these guys, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But we're saying if, if, if the whole black community is saying black platform is bad, don't go over them. And then one of our leaders go over there. That, that, that's messing us up too in the mind. I, it messed me up in the mind because I look up to Tariq. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, so this is how I would challenge you to look at it. Everybody's obviously not going to, agree or align with with what we stand for and what we believe in. But I don't think that means we should put this wall up and cut them out because 
then we're isolating ourselves. We ain't never going to grow and we never going to learn from it. There's things to be learned from that platform. I understand what you're saying about, like, I mean, a lot of people say Vlad Poli. <laughs> Vlad, Vlad yeah. the Fed. Yeah, you he know what going, I mean? All that. You I get I mean? that, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. But what's stopping somebody from going on that platform and not allowing him to 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 force that rhetoric on, Facts. on them? 100%. What's to stop somebody from going on there and changing the culture of that show just by them going and taking a stand for their community? I don't think you should. I don't think anybody should just say, nah, I don't like that platform, so I ain't rocking with them. It's the same with politics. Yeah. In politics, everybody ain't going to like both sides. Yeah, right. It's it's always going to be, a tough you know, that yeah. it, it, it's always going to be that that tension. But I still think you should talk to both sides. Yeah, facts. How you going to learn? How you going to understand why they thinking the way they are? Why they doing the things they are? How many people have gone on there and asked Vlad, like, or and really tried to dig in his mind and figure out where he's coming from? So you kind of cancel all that out when you just say, nah, I ain't doing it. Facts, facts, yeah. And it's just, like I said, for me, I'm going on Vlad. I don't, <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? And because I understand, like, you have to take your platform to another level. And sometimes you might got to go some places that you really maybe don't agree with. But do you think that's kind of like, uh, that's kind of like a thorn in the black community? Like, just because we don't agree on the same, it's like, oh, I can't mess with you. I, it's absolutely a thorn. We too emotional. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We way too emotional. And that's what a lot of things, it's like, you either agree with me or you non-existent. It's crazy. And that's why we're still behind. That's what stop. Like, think about black-owned businesses, right? Yeah, we're the only ones that say black-owned business. And just stand, instead of saying a business, and we and we catering to black folks, right? And it's nothing, mind you. I'm a huge supporter of black-owned businesses, yeah. but when you put yourself in that box, you missing out on white, you missing out on Asian, you missing out on Latin, you miss. So you're putting yourself in this box and you missing out. You're you're limiting yourself. You're creating a ceiling for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And then you want to turn around and blame everybody else. Mm. So I think it's important for everybody to really look deeper into that and understand what you're really doing. Is everybody supposed to own a business? Or is it really like it's workers, then it's, you know what I'm saying? You know, in Bible, they always say it's pastors, preachers, um, What's the mindset? How can you pick and choose he's a good boss or he need to own a business? You know what I'm saying? Like, how can, how are we choosing that? Because, like, I might be the smartest person in the room and get a business and nobody might not show up. You know what I'm saying? Do you think, do you, and, and, and just to, uh, I want to go to, I, I want I want to comment on that, but um, do you think that if, if we are open a black business, our people need to come on and show out just to get us started? Because, we can go to Instagram. If you go on your Instagram, you might got 10,000 followers and 9,000 of them might be blacks. Mm -hmm. And so that's where it kind of started, right? And so should blacks most definitely support the business just to get it going? Is, it's, is, it, is they, are we entitled to that or what? I'm just saying. If you post something, again, uh -huh. if you post something, I can kind of almost guarantee... Maybe not you, but everybody, if we got 10,000 followers, 9,000 blacks. Yeah. So I, I think it's multiple levels to that. But but to start, I don't think we're entitled to it. Uh, the reason why is because if you, again, the overall reason why we don't have the money that we should have in the black community is because we go spend it elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Do I agree with that? No. Do I think that we should be supporting our own? Absolutely. But we're not entitled to it. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we should depend on it. Um, just like starting a business, you can't depend on the people closest to you. My businesses, strangers is, is the ones who who made me the most money. 
that's what but that's what you want. And even even okay, we can we 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 can say all day. Oh, we supporting all black businesses. How many black grocery stores is it? How many black farm how many what what is uh like two, three percent black farmers? Yeah. And so we're I mean Now why is that? Why? I'm asking. I don't I don't so know. So it's because we have got in this this whole trend of we're we're trendy. Mm-hmm. So credit was big. Then everybody wanted to start a credit repair company. Then Airbnb was big. Everybody wanted to do that. Then you got all these different things. So it's all trendy. Nobody is consistent with it. And then we're tr- again we're limiting ourselves. By trying to stay just within the black community, there's no black family anywhere that has ever established generational wealth. Mm. None. So, in order to learn how to do that, you got to go outside the black community. Okay. You can bring that information back. And if you look at the wealthy, the the black billionaires we have now, that's exactly what they did. Most definitely. So I think we get caught up in our community and we don't start those grocery stores and stuff like that because we haven't seen it and we won't go out to learn from them. You, um, um, do you think it's a faith thing? Do you think we not have the faith to say, but, but I'm, cause I'm just saying, they're saying this, speaking on that. Uh, if I'm, if I'm a black, I'm a quote unquote, a black business owner Uh and I'm putting, a business in my black community. How many how many white people are showing up to this black community establishment? You know what I'm saying. So yeah. I'm just working from there. Okay. So 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 let's use a European example. Okay. And then we're gonna come back to that, right? Um. We'll take Louis Vuitton. Was Louis Vuitton in the black community? Black people go anywhere though. That's what I'm saying. But it it, it wasn't in a it, not not at all. So we are some of the largest consumers of those brands. Facts. Because we feel that those brands signify something that's superior. We have this complex, and and I know that comes from like generations and generations yeah, ago. Yeah. It was ingrained in us so i understand where it come from but we have this complex that white ice is colder and it's not and it's not <laughs> it's just ice <laughs> so so that's what i think we have to get over when it comes to business because you could have black folks that start a, a clothing line mm-hmm. and it'd be dope it and you can take the same exact quality from a designer Gucci Louis whatever and do the same thing but it's owned by a black individual and they still gonna go to them designers because that's what's amplified because we feel like that's a status symbol that's gonna get us more attention that's gonna show everybody that I'm wealthy but nobody thinks about the fact that okay if you can have your own brand and that's what you wear. And you get your entire community to support your brand. Why We don't need to go outside. Now, we're keeping the dollars within our community. Yeah. You have your, your own brand, something that lives on. Some, so you can start the progress, the progression of creating generational, real generational wealth. Do you think, uh, I'm, I'm going uh, to just throw this out here. We go because we we're gonna go back to the, like the rap community. And yeah, we're talking about the actors and all this. Do you think they play a big part in that? Because if they're hopping on, they're hopping on in there saying, "Hey, Louis Vuitton, you ain't nothing if you don't got Louis Vuitton." Yeah, you know, people on the other side of that is they fans and they saying, "I gotta get me some Louis." Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, instead of saying, "Hey, go get that Quanti Cash gear." Yeah. If they say that, then, you know what I mean, they'll go get Quanti Cash. And so how are we going to change the trajectory of the black community if we got the, the biggest voices 
doing the opposite of what we should be doing. It's it, it again. It's it's all going back to the mindset. We have to unlearn so much because and, and again asking why. So if we had more people asking, hey, why are all the rappers wearing all these uh, European designers? Because they getting a check for it. Mm. They not doing it for free. They getting a check. People on the outside looking in don't see that. The effects. They just thinking, oh, that's what's in. That's not what's in. That's what's paying them. So when we can separate that, again, the emotion, what all the big corporations have become uh, great at is playing on our emotions. And that's why that works. That's why they can put these rappers in this designer and go say, hey, go shoot that music video with this on. And, and next week, now everybody at the store trying to get the same thing. Think of, I want you to think about something. Money is very tempting for the people who don't have it. Yeah. Like you can you can come in and you can you can have a hundred thousand, you can have a hundred and fifty, you can have two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and you coming in and you're good. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And but now you got this person right here that's been stressing for three years and one of these people is offering them a check like, hey, we're going to pay you such and such just to, because you got a good following just to go on there and say, hey, I like this group of people. Uh, how are we getting our people to turn that down when they actually going through it? They ain't, you know what I'm saying? More people have to, more people have to speak up. Um, and, and that was one of the motivations behind my brand real. More people have to speak up that are on the ground level. Because a lot of black folks, once you get up there, you ain't looking back. You don't want to go back down to the ground level. At all. You want to move to the, down there. You want to go to the suburb. You want to be around a white folk. And I I get it. You want to, because you feel like that's better. Yeah. But again, it ain't nothing stopping you from building the house you want in black communities and people will come back and say, Oh, well, I don't want people running up in my stuff. Ain't nobody stopping them from running up in your stuff in the white communities. Yeah. So I think it's really, once we understand the power that we have, again, it's, it's all mental. It's a, it's a psychological game. How, how many years down the line do you, do you see for that you think, black, quote-unquote, black people are going to come together and say, hey, finally get it and say, hey, it's time for us to roll together and quit rolling against each other. You know what I'm saying? Do you do you ever foresee that happening in where we're at now? When the nation fall? I think that's the only way, when the nation fall. And I won't go deep into it, but I think it, all good things come to an end. If you study the Roman Empire, the Roman Empire, the things that we're going through now is the exact same things the Roman Empire went through. Hey. And a lot of people say history repeats itself. I don't think history repeats itself. I think mankind does. Mm. So in order for us to get to that point, I think it's got to be a reset. And I think this whole structure that we have that we've been living under for all these decades has to come down. What's um what's the definition of help when uh when when you're talking about even a guy like you, um, you made it out the hood, you know what I'm saying? You uh my hindsight, you all in freaking Africa and Asia <laughs> and all you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You in all these these, these places. What's considered help when you've made it a little bit and you and you know some people are at the bottom? What's considered help? Uh, again, meeting them on a level, having a conversation. Strong. So, some people, I used to be completely against social media and showing things on social media, mm -hmm. um, until I had a conversation with somebody who explain to me how much it motivated them. Mm. So it's not going to be everybody. You're never going to be able to 
help everybody. Back. So what keeps me going and what motivates me to keep doing that is when people, I get people randomly in my DMs regularly that is like, hey, you motivate me. I yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. And it's like, to me, it's just something that I'm just, you know, trying to put out little bits and pieces so people can see it's attainable. How do you pick and choose who you help? You know what I'm saying? When you when you know you can really help them, how do you pick and choose who you help? You, so I don't think you actually help them. I think you help them help themselves. Okay. okay. So, again, going back to asking the question why, right? Mm -hmm. So everybody's situation is going to be different. So yeah. I can tell them what I did and say, hey, go do what I did. But it may not work for them. So what I like to do is present them with questions, scenarios, things to think about so they can figure it out themselves. Because their situation going to be different than mine. It ain't no one size fit all blueprint for this. Okay. So I think for me, even with like mentees that I had, my mentorship, um, I started off as teaching people how to start short term rental companies mm -hmm. and, you know, real estate, get the properties, all of that. What I realized in doing that is most people that came to me didn't want to do that. Mm. They just wanted the results from it. Yeah. Yeah. So when I when I really started asking questions and get to the bottom of it, they just wanted the end result. So then it came became my mentorship became helping them figure out what they was passionate about. Thanks. And then we can figure out how you get to to that financial goal that you have. Yeah. Um so again, everybody's not gonna relate the same way. Can any amount of money sway you? And, and and when I when I when I say sway, I don't mean like doing something like nothing crazy. But if if you're with a certain organization, certain party, anything, and they're saying, "Hey, we're gonna give you a million dollars just to say you with us," can any type of money sway you? Me, no, no. And the reason I say that now has it always been that way? Nah, okay. I wouldn't yeah. say that. <laughs> no, nah, yeah. it hasn't. It hasn't always been okay. that way. Where I am now. now Nah, because the work, the amount of work that I've done, and is and it wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. It's 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 one of those things where it's very lonely road. But uh, creating that peace in your life, once you get a taste of it, you're not willing to let anybody mess that up. Yeah. So, nah, nobody can. So how do you how how do you uh kind of control your circle like when you when you get to that next level and keeping peace and all this and that. You know, we all, um, I see you travel a lot by yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't ever, you know what I mean? It, just from the post, I don't see, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I don't see nobody yeah. with yeah, you. Yeah, I do. You know what I'm saying? Okay, and so we're all trying to gravitate to the level of the wife and the the picket fences yeah. and all this and that. And so um, how are we doing more in our communities to say, hey, this is what a family looks like if we're not having a family? And, and, and we're and we not showing that. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And so how are we in court, encouraging people to move our community on if we're not doing it? So I think it, first you got to start with building yourself up. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I think there is such a negative stigma around family, marriage, whatever, in our community is because everybody hasn't done the work. It's more of we just going to be together. And, and and it is what it is. But uh, so like what I do, traveling by myself, going to experience different cultures, um, gardening that I got into, different things that I'm doing, is showing that I'm doing the work. Yeah, man. yeah. So that also attracts individuals that are on that same wavelength. Okay. I think it's important for people to date other individuals that are in their same mental and emotional tax bracket. What do you feel about, um, and I'm going to, because I just want to stay right here where you are. Uh, what do you feel about interracial date? Uh, I don't, I don't really, I, I don't care about any, I'm any Dr. thoughts. Umar. I, I thought about a white girl, but I'm scared Dr. Uber going to get me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so scared Dr. Uber. It's like, so, I think as soon as I get a white girl, Dr. Uber just going to appear. <laughs> 
Oh, so I'm, yeah. but I'm just saying, how yeah. do you feel about And that's the first thing everybody say is, oh, hey, Dr. Umar wouldn't be happy about that. <laughs> that's <what he> <laughs> the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So in your opinion, like, what do you feel about? I, I, I think that you love who you love. Okay. Um, If that person is, is a different race, different color, so be it. Yeah. As long as you happy mm-hmm. and as long as y'all can build together, that's all that matter. Because a lot of times we get that outside pressure like, oh, no, you got to stay within the black community or you're this and you that. Well, if you succumb to that and you allow that to get ingrained in your head and, and it's messing with your mental, then you got some work to do. Facts, yeah. But if Dr. Umar, if you if you if hey, you got that, but so if you walk up on Umar, yep, you know now, what I'm saying? Now what it now who Dr. Umar got? <laughs> hey, hey, look like Sookie. Hey, 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 look hey, at hey. Dr. Dr. Umar, you been on Sookie Hunter hey, a lot now. Ray J Do- got mad at you. Hey, you if it what? was if it was he that simple, no, he ain't got no battle. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm just, if it nah, was that, that simple. That's what, that goes back to what I was asking you about the conversation is how are we talking about relationship, Dr. Umar? We need to answer, we need for you to answer this question. I know you say you're gonna have about three, four, five wives, and that's cool. <laughs> but we really need to know, like, okay, if Dr. Umar, if you pushing this black on black wife thing, we need to see you, you know what I'm saying? But see, that's the thing. I think that we gotta get away from pushing our beliefs and our opinions on other people or on the community. We just talking about. Like, if we were just talking about that, like, just because we don't believe the same way, that don't make us, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. And that's a thing that we have to, we have to unlearn Mm -hmm. and, again, learn how to manage our emotions. Because it's all emotions. That's all it is. Do do you really think uh, what you eat controls your thoughts? Absolutely. 100%. All this and that. 100%. And so, look, and let's talk about that a little bit. Like, um... What are we supposed to be eating and what are we not supposed to be eating? So, in, in your opinion. Yeah, so in, in my opinion, it's supposed to be, everything should be natural. Everything we need is already here. Mm. There's nothing, anything you can go, you go buy in the store, you can make. Thanks. I learned how to, so, I recently, like the past year and a half or so, um, I've really gotten into like the, all that I grow my food in my backyard. That's real talk. Yeah. So like, and and I have a a son, five year old son, and um, he's nonverbal. Five years old, don't talk. Um, possibly on the autism spectrum. Okay. My son is, he got autism. So so they say. It, yeah. So yeah, it's holding a conversation. But. So the so the thing with that is. The there there's things that they consume or that they may have gotten from mother whatever. There's a lot of different things that can play into it, but a lot of it is based off of what we eat. Mm-hmm. Um, the gut, we, a lot of heavy metals is what leads to those developmental delays. Those heavy metals come from processed foods, come from all the stuff you get from the grocery store. Okay. So. Under, when I really did a deep dive on that, because I'm trying to figure out, like, all right, what's wrong with my son? How can I help him? Okay, most definitely. Yeah. That really catapulted me, like, to go all in. So, my son, I, I cook for him every day. Mm-hmm. I don't even like cooking. Are you a, you a single dad? Yeah, yeah. Well, his mom is still around. His, right. his mom is still in his life, but I'm the primary parent. Okay. Yeah. See, we got a, um, man, um. Shout out to the single dad. That's one of those still, man. Pet yourself on the back sometimes. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? And so um, when it comes to raising a son, how you are, like how you, like what's your, what, what's, what's your, what's y'all daily son, dad? Like how is dad training his son to go down the path where you are? Because the Bible says train them up the way that you go. And when they get older, they won't depart. Yeah. So, so, so what's your emotion on how you're training your son? Like how are you? Building him, are you letting him kind of do his own thing, or are you kind of like really building him to yeah. roll with you? So it's um, structured freedom is what I call it. Uh, so there is structure. Like we wake up, you go use the bathroom, you brush your teeth, um, things like that. But 
he explores a lot like kids do. Mm -hmm. So instead of saying, hey, don't do that, don't touch that all the time, if he doing something that he ain't supposed to do, like for instance, touching the stove, I'd be in the kitchen cooking and he want to come touch the stove. And I'd tell him, I told him two times, hey, don't touch that, it's hot. hot. So third time he come up and he looking at me like this. I ain't say nothing. Oh, go on, touch it. Go on. And he burnt his finger. Yeah. He ain't never touched the stove again. Never touched it again. So I let him explore. Um, I mean, responsibly, of course, but I let him explore. How do you um how do you let you and the mother have control? That is probably one of the hardest things that I've encountered in my life is because you can't because we're not together. We yeah, weren't. We ha we 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 haven't been. Um, if you're saying I want him to play basketball, she's saying I don't want to play basketball. How does that? You know yeah. what I'm saying? So so uh, I think when it comes down to stuff like that, let the kid choose what they want to do. Um. Cause at the end of the day, kids have their own personalities yeah. and you know, I've had, uh, I've been blessed enough to be able to see like my son develop his own personality and really he know what he like. Yeah. Facts. Even if he can't verbally say it right now, he know what he like. He know how to communicate it like it. So let him do that. I'm not going to force nothing on him. If uh, Okay. So your son is, mm -hmm. he's in your primary care. And uh, if the mother is is getting them when she do, do you have a restriction on him being around another man? So this used to, when uh, early on, this was something that was big for me. And I was always like, hey, don't don't have no other dudes around my son. <laughs> is but, it fair? But, but at the end of the day, you can't control that. Yeah. <laughs> So it's like, am I really going to sit here and stress this knowing that there's no way for me to control that? Yeah. So yeah. at the end of the day, like, I just have to trust as his mother okay. that she's going to be responsible in who she brings around. I do. Um, even though it's foreign, but it's not supposed to be like that. If, if again, I'm a Bible guy, you know what I'm saying? I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm a parable guy. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to stop saying Bible. I'm going to say I'm a parable guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the Bible always talks about how the man's supposed to raise the household. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And with you, um, why is it so odd that a man is raising his child? Society has made us think that that's not the way it goes. Yeah. And I've, I experience it so much when it comes to the teachers, doctors, therapists, all of that. I schedule his appointments. I set all, I make the calls. Yeah. So what I ran into a lot early on is they'll call his mom. She don't know none. You. <laughs> so you. they call his mom and, and the mom then call you. it was times <laughs> when she wouldn't tell me about a like an appointment. I'm getting ready to call, go to an, take him to an appointment. I call, confirm. Oh yeah, this didn't go through. Who called me? So I had to get on their ass. Like tell them doctors, I teachers. I done sat down. I had them in pre-K. I scheduled a con. Like hey, we need to sit down. We we need to discuss some things. How do you how do you figure out when it's coming to taking a kid, and it's so not common in our community? How did you guys figure out, say, hey, we ain't together no more. I'm going to take him. Uh, So, really, that was... So, just, I, I'll give you a quick rundown of how it all happened. So, we were, we weren't officially dating, but we was going strong. We went our separate ways. A month later, got the call, she was pregnant. Huh. I always had the mentality... If I have a kid with somebody, we stuck together forever. Mm -hmm. So what I did was move her in with me. I said, all right, you having a kid? Cool. Move in with me. Probably three months down the line, I was like, this ain't this You got to move working. out with me. <laughs> so I said, yo, let's, let's focus on co-parenting. She's <laughs> yeah. still pregnant at the time. Yeah. But I was like, I think we should focus on co-parenting because this just ain't going to be healthy. This ain't it. Yeah. Yeah. So once he was born... 
he came home with me because she wasn't prepared. Mind you, I'm, like I said, I, I read in and stuff. I'm understanding the court system just in case I got to deal with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm understanding all the things I got to do with a newborn baby, the swaddle, the feed, and all of that stuff, which I encourage her to do. Mm-hmm. That just didn't happen. And it's not to talk bad on her, but that's no, 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 that's no. how he ended up with me yeah. from the beginning. So so I went through the whole, all the waking up every two hours every night, feeding them and doing all them things. Um, and and I'm not mad about that. I'm glad no, I did. No, definitely. But, uh, but yeah, it was just one of them things where I wasn't willing to just accept that. How hard is it? How hard is it on her? That she got to listen to her people, her family, and your family say, "You don't got your baby like that. Man, got your baby. You, you know what I'm saying? Do you? Ha, has it been hard on her? Have y'all had that conversation? Or um, has, you know what I'm saying? Because, like I said, we think that automatically, oh, it's go with the woman. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm not sure really the okay. the feedback she gets. Um, are you still in love with her? No, nah. the love still there. No. Okay, it's over. It ain't no coming back. It's, Nah, nah, not not like that. Baby. I would say there's a love for her being the mother of my son. Like I'm gonna always make sure she good. Okay, relationship like intimately. Yeah. Nah, like, like, nah. That's that's been done. When she moved out and we went. Nah, that's and I don't spend the block. Okay, that's okay, just one of my things. Okay, okay, okay. So, <laughs> so everything good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> On that end, um. Real quick, man. This is uh, we. I didn't want to hold you long. He's uh, here visiting. I know you want to enjoy the city. Real quick, man. Can you? I want you to give. You can look in the camera. I want you to give our people like just some encouraging for us to really, really get it on track and get to where we're going together. You know what I'm saying? Just something. Um. So first, I would say embrace adversity. Mm. Um. And this is one thing to remember. Uh, It's a quote. It's not my quote. I can't take credit for it. But uh, adversity visits the strong, but stays forever with the weak. Mm. So everybody going to go through hard times. You still got to work through it. If you're strong, you know that that adversity is just visiting. It ain't going to stay long. Um, That also ties into my brand real. Uh, rich even after losses. Everybody takes losses, no matter what you say. Everybody takes a loss. If you're a boss, you're going to take a loss. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So um, as long as you learn and, and continue to grow, you stay real, stay your true self, you turn those losses into lessons. So uh, just embrace that, man. Embrace the journey um, and understand that there's no way to get to success without failures. Mm. Look, they say it ain't a loss, it's a lesson. My boy Vic came through here today like he said he would. I told you, I'm having people travel from out of town to come to If You're Alive, subscribe. And that's like, that's why I want to say I'm going to pat myself on the back again because um, uh, this man busy. This man is booked and busy <laughs> and got stuff going on. And so for you to uh, pick my platform to come, uh, it was a blessing. Um more than welcome anytime. Anything we can do for you is cool. And so I just want to thank you for coming, man. If you're alive, subscribe. Yo, we out of here. Hey, we out.